Okay, I'm going to explain briefly to a couple people in my family why when you type in what don't we know about gravity because if you ask in the right way you can get more uh, achievement here. However, if we are to be honest we do not know what gravity is and that to me what they're saying is however if we are to be honest we do not know what gravity is itself in any fundamental way now that is alarm bells and red flags they will say they will say we only know how it behaves and on one hand they'll tell you gravity is a force of attraction that exists between any two masses, any two bodies, any two particles. Gravity is not just the attraction between objects on Earth. Okay, so what they're talking about is the alleged effects or results of gravity. It is not gravity itself because this is what they say about gravity itself. However, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is in any fundamental way. That's saying a lot. You know, this is a very big red flag. Now, I'm going to explain why they have to say, however, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is in any fundamental way. Now, the main thing here is I do not deny that if we did live on the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical water world space ball speeding faster than a bullet at the equator which is a thousand thirty eight miles an hour we are taught that gravity is so good and effective that even though at the equator of the earth the halfway point between the north and southern hemispheres on the ball that it is spinning faster than a mediocre handgun bullet, a thousand thirty-eight miles an hour, and the gravity is so good that we don't notice one iota of that movement. We are also taught that gravity, after the Big Bang, assembled all the swirling gas dust particles and pulled it all together to make every planet, every star, every moon, and every rock in an infinite and expanding vacuum universe. Okay, what people are missing here is that for a force or occurrence to be real, it has to possess presence and substance of itself. Now, if I went over there, if I wanted to move that chair, it would take the presence and substance of my arm and hand to move it. It would require direct interaction of the presence and substance of my arm and hand touching that chair through interaction to move it. Okay, presence and substance is required for any person, place, or thing to exist, force or occurrence. On the one hand, they say gravity is not a force per Newton, that it's the curvature of space time, the fabric of space time by Einstein. Then they say it's a weak force or a fictitious force. Google it. They call it a fictitious force, which it is. Now, electricity has presence and substance of itself. We have directly detected electricity itself, directly identified it, and directly um, isolated electricity. And we've harnessed it to power our devices to shock people with tasers and to revive people whose, heart, whose hearts have failed and to kill people in electric chairs. Electricity per current is real and it has presence and substance. But all the electronic devices in the world turned on at the same time would not be doing 1% of what gravity itself is alleged to be doing. And we can detect electricity, but the, this other force or occurrence, gravity, that's doing trillions of times more things than electricity every second, cannot be directly detected itself. They use parlor tricks like gravimeters and Cavendish, which are only the alleged effects or results of gravity. 
this should be a problem. Gravity itself would be the realest force or occurrence in our reality. It would literally have to directly engage, engulf, or directly interact with every blade of grass, every particle of sand, every grain of dirt, person, place, and thing on the earth to hold it, pull it, or curve it back towards the center of the earth. So science teaches in schools that gravity is a fact. When I, before I came across the flat earth, I thought gravity was a fact. It would have to be a fact. If it were real, if it were holding both cars or curving or pulling them back to the center of the earth, there would have to be direct presence and substance of gravity itself directly interacting, engaging, or engulfing them cars to pull, curve, or hold them back to the center of the earth. And to date, and the reason why, they have to say, however, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is in any fundamental way. That is a serious statement. If we are truly, as they say, living on the outside surface of a giant spinning ball, doing multiple actions at once, that's so good and so effective that we do not detect one hair or scintilla of a movement over a thousand miles an hour at the equator. We cannot feel anything. Even worse, they say the Earth is hurtling around the sun at almost 70,000 miles every hour, every minute and second of the day. So the Earth is spinning on its axis at 1,038 miles an hour, faster than a bullet, and then at the same time going around the sun at 66,600 miles an hour, rounded off to 70,000. And that gravity is so effective that we don't know it. And that you can look at a pond or a lake on a very calm day and it is super duper still. So how can science say However, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is in any fundamental way. It is because no man, no instrument or device has ever directly detected, directly isolated, or directly identified gravity itself. They never have, and that's why they have to say they don't know what it is in any fundamental way. Yet, we're taught that it's pulling, holding, or curving every piece of matter, blade of grass, particle of dirt, grain of sand, person, place, and thing, curving, holding, or, or, or pull, uh, pulling all of it back towards the center of the earth. And we notice nothing of these gig gigantic speeds that the earth is doing because gravity is so effective. Can you understand... Some people don't have the content of character to deal with it. It would be like a system overload, maybe? And so you just brush it off? How can gravity itself be doing all these things? How did it pull, hold, or curve all the swirling gas, dust, and particles after the Big Bang? Pull it all together to make every planet moon, star, and rock in an infinite vacuum universe. How? What presence and substance of current, field, wave, beam, ray, or particle did it employ? Did it engage, engulf, or directly interact with all those particles and swirling gas after the Big Bang to make all these planets, stars, moons, and rocks, or asteroids within an infinite vacuum universe? Worse, how is it pulling, curving, or holding all matter to the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical ball? And we cannot detect any presence or substance of any known means of propagation, a current, field, wave, beam, ray, or particle. We can't. There isn't, isn't one iota of any direct detection of this force or occurrence. How is that? Why doesn't that bother you? 
Now, if they somehow could directly detect gravity itself tomorrow, it would destroy, crush, eliminate, and resolve the flat earth immediately. Okay, but I'm telling you the reasons why they'll never ever directly detect gravity itself in the statement verbatim. However, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is in any fundamental way. Google it. Type in what don't we know about gravity and it comes right up first hit. And there's a reason why they say that. That could not be true if we truly did live, walk, eat, and build on the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical water world ball. This force or occurrence would be the realest, most detectable force or occurrence in our reality. We could identify, isolate, and harness gravity itself, but we can't. We've harnessed magnetic field through the direct detection and, and, and isolation of, the, of a magnet. We've directly done the same thing with electricity and harnessed it to use and employ because it, it has presence and substance of current and field to harness, to employ. So again, we are shown parlor tricks with the gravimeter and cabin dash and endless animation of bowling balls on trampolines to depict the alleged fabric of space-time being curved. Okay, they have discarded Newton for Einstein. And people graduating from college today are not aware of this. How can gravity itself be real when you can't detect one iota of it itself? Now, the absolute conclusion here and reason why the statement exists, however, if we are to be honest, we do not know what gravity is in any fundamental way, is because it does not exist. It has no presence and substance of any known means of propagation, a current field, wave, beam, ray, or particle. And that means the reason why the only thing you'll entertain is if it's not gravity, you have to replace it. The only reason you were programmed to think that way is because you truly believe you are living, walking, eating, and building on the outside surface of a giant spinning space ball. But you are not, because if we did, gravity could never be a theory. It would be a trillion times more real and detectable by a presence and substance of the known means of propagation, a current field wave, beam, and ray, trillion times more than electricity and magnetism. Okay? Gravi or gravity is not real. They will never detect it, and it will always be a theory. Always. And people can't get past the fact that the reason why they so firmly believe in gravity is because they think they live on the a globe. They were taught to believe that walking on a flat surface is stupid, even though to build any city house entire city it has to be on a level foundation flat we were taught that walking on a flat surface is stupid but it's okay and smart to think you are walking around on the outside surface of a giant spinning spherical water world ball that is illogical and people don't realize that the geometric horizon has been debunked and eliminated we see way too far to be on a ball of 25,000 miles in circumference. And this is what Louis Elizondo and his cronies don't want you to know. They want you to believe in an infinite vacuum universe that violates the second law of thermodynamics, entropy, and Boyle's law.